The July 1932 election saw the Nazis become the largest political party in the Reichstag. On the back of this success, Hitler demanded to be made Chancellor, but President Hindenburg refused, viewing Hitler as a vulgar, jumped-up corporal. Fast forward to the November 1932 elections and the Nazis win 32% of the vote, giving them 196 seats in the Reichstag. The Nazis still remained the largest party, and as the leader of the biggest party, Hitler should have been made Chancellor. The big businesses who supported Hitler even wrote a letter to the President, asking him to appoint Hitler as Chancellor. Again, Hindenburg refused. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Von Papen believes and convinced Hindenburg that if Hitler was made Chancellor with Von Papen himself as Vice-Chancellor, they could control Hitler from behind the scenes and use Hitler as a puppet. Von Papen was arrogant enough to boast to Hindenburg and other right-wing parties that he had Hitler in his pocket. Reluctantly, Hindenburg agreed. Hitler became Chancellor on the 30th of January 1933 legally and democratically. However, despite being Chancellor, his powers were limited via the following. The Weimar Constitution dictated what he could do and largely favoured the President. The President had the power to suspend the Reichstag, call new elections and take control of the army. Importantly, the President could suspend the Constitution and rule by decree. Even though they were the largest party, the Nazis only made up a third of the Reichstag. A two-third majority was needed to pass laws. Further, Hitler's cabinet only had two other Nazis out of 11. From here, Hitler began to consolidate his power by removing all opposition. On the 27th of February 1933, the Reichstag was set on fire and burnt down. A Dutch communist supporter named Marinus van der Loop was caught and arrested. He later confessed to starting the fire and was put on trial and sentenced to death via guillotine. Despite van der Loop stating he had no affiliation with the KPD, Hitler blamed the fire on the communists, who were one of the largest parties in Germany at the time, and they had increased their share of Reichstag seats in the November 1932 elections at the expense of the Nazi party. Hitler convinced the aging president that the communists were attempting a push, and persuaded Hindenburg to pass a decree for the protection of people and state. This decree temporarily suspended most political and civil liberties in Germany and allowed the Nazis to round up anyone who they deemed a threat to public safety without the consent of the Reichstag. Communist leaders were arrested and thrown in jail and their meetings and papers were outlawed. The elections were called for the 5th of March 1933. In order to secure a majority, Hitler and the Nazis launched an aggressive campaign, imprisoning many of their political rivals, notably the KPD, using the Reichstag fire decree and unleashing the SA to attack political rivals and intimidate voters. These tactics worked as the Nazis went from 196 seats to 288, increasing their seats of the Reichstag to 44%. However, this still did not give the Nazis a two-third majority that they craved. Poor Adolf. However, the communists were banned from taking up their 81 seats, and with the support of the other nationalist parties, this finally gave Hitler a two-third majority in the Reichstag. On the 23rd of March, the Enabling Act was passed. The KPD was banned and SA and SS members were posted around the Crow Opera House where the Reichstag had met since the fire to intimidate non-Nazi members to vote for the Enabling Act. This allowed Hitler to make laws for four years without the consent of the Reichstag. Hitler was now essentially a dictator. The act was passed by 444 votes to 94. Now that Hitler could make laws without the consent of the Reichstag, on the 2nd of May he banned the trade unions who potentially could have opposed him. Hitler was worried that the trade unions could be controlled by communist and non-working men and that they would use strikes to attack the government. Hitler abolished the trade unions, made strikes illegal and set up in its place the German labour front. Hitler now controlled German workers. 
Next, on the 20th of June 1933, Hitler reached a concordat with Pope Pius XI. The Catholic Church agreed not to interfere in politics and the social aims of the Nazi party. German bishops were ordered to swear an oath of loyalty to the Nazis, and the Catholic Centrum Party was banned. In return, Hitler allowed Catholics the freedom of worship and Catholic schools would be left alone. At the start of 1934, Germany was a one-party state, with Hitler at the head of that party. Hitler continued to consolidate his power by Nazifying all areas of German society, such as setting up people's courts where judges had to swear an oath of loyalty to the Nazis. Judges were handpicked to hear cases of treason, and Hitler himself could intervene and increase sentences he felt were lenient. At this point, most of Hitler's opponents had been removed, aside from the president who potentially posed an external obstacle to his power. However, Hindenburg was old and weak and it was no secret that the president did not have long left. Instead, Hitler faced opposition from inside his own party in the form of Ernst Röhm and the SA. Rome had merged the Stahlhelm with the SA which brought the SA membership to 3 million, all loyal to Rome himself. He had the muscle to challenge Hitler. Rome also had enemies within and outside the Nazi party, who were looking to strengthen their own position. The Treaty of Versailles limited the German army to just 100,000 men, way smaller than the SA. Rome made no secret that he wanted his SA to replace the army, which in turn led army leaders to dislike him. Also at this point, the army leaders still distrusted Hitler and held him in disdain, viewing him as only a corporal. The army was also still under President Hindenburg's control, and they had not sworn an oath of loyalty to Hitler. Himmler and Heydrich resented Rome too, as leaders of the SS, reducing the power of the SA and eliminating Rome, would increase their own power and the status of the SS. Leaders of both the SS and the army warned Hitler that Rome was plotting against him and ready to remove him from power. Hitler acted, he made a pact with the army and agreed that if he removed Rome, the SA would come under the command of the army. In return, the army would swear an oath of allegiance to Hitler. On the 30th of June, Rome was arrested along with several other senior SA officers. Rome was executed in his cell at Stadelheim Jail by two SS men. About 400 people were shot or bludgeoned to death without trial, but not all were SA members or had any connections to the SA. The Night of the Long Knives was a chance for Hitler to finally rid himself of any remnants of opposition. Ex-Chancellor von Schleicher was gunned down and Gregor Strasser, who held similar views to Rome, was gunned down in his cell. President Hindenburg died on the 2nd of August 1934. The last realistic opposition to his power was now gone. Hitler declared himself Germany's Führer. He added all of the president's powers to his own and every soldier in the army swore an oath of loyalty to Hitler. All the pieces of the puzzle were now in place. Hitler was the Führer of a totalitarian state. About 400 people were shot or bludgeoned to death without trial, but not all were SA members or had any connections to the SA. The Night of the Long Knives was a chance for Hitler to finally rid himself of any remnants of opposition. Ex-Chancellor von Schleicher was gunned down and Gregor Strasser, who held similar views to Rome, was gunned down in his cell. Hitler was now clearly acting illegally, but a lot of Germans were not aware of how bloody Hitler had been. Even so, the SA were hated by a lot of Germans due to their brutality and were grateful the SA was now on a leash. Hitler was now at Hitler was now clearly acting illegally, but a lot of Germans were not aware of how bloody Hitler had been. Even so, the SA were hated by a lot of Germans due to their brutality and so were grateful the SA was now on a leash. President Hindenburg died on the 2nd of August 1934. Hitler declared himself Germany's Führer. President Hindenburg died on the 2nd of August 1934. The last realistic opposition to his power was now gone. Hitler declared himself Germany's Führer. He added all of the president's powers to his own, and every soldier in the army saw an oath of loyalty to Hitler. Now that Hitler had a majority, he could do what many historians argue is the most important event of his consolidation of power. Furthermore, Hitler grew fearful of Rome because he opposed some of his policies, 
critical of his links to rich industrialists who had backed Hitler during the elections and Hitler's relationship with the army. Rome wanted more socialist policies to tax the rich and help the working class.